Let's talk about Carlos and G2. It's sort of semi-related since it's apparently I only wrote the article to A, cover for a friend, even though I've been pretty critical of him, B, to cover for me, because I'm, I'm the real bad guy. I'm the villain. I wrote an article, right, and no one read it. <laughs> uh, it was popular, and there was a pretty much two-thirds of the people said, good article, it's nice to have some colour and some nuance, and that's fine. And I re respect two-thirds as a majority. My mathematics isn't the best, but I know that much. And there was probably about a third of people who got as far as the headline, maybe the first sentence, uh, maybe the first paragraph, and then reeled off a bunch of, like, nonsense and garbage uh, about it. The first thing people took issue with, uh, he's calling Carlos a victim, because they've never heard the phrase, fell victim to. Uh, fell victim to doesn't mean that that person is the victim in the story. It means that they were essentially hindered in some way by an external force. They fell victim uh, to this particular thing. It's interesting that they would isolate the word victim because obviously it precedes the word mistake. <laughs> so, you know, you couldn't be under any illusions about the person who wrote this headline's summary of the article. But, uh, yeah, there we, there we are, apparently. Nobody read that. There were people literally posting, Look, he says Carlos is the victim. So, the point of this article was to essentially just say something that sort of needs to, needs to get said. And I've said it many, many times before. I didn't need Carlos, by the way, having his thing that he had, to bring it up as a topic. It's that we find it incredibly easy to dogpile and go after the villain of the day especially when we have the cultural cachet to do it but what we don't do is take that energy and say okay yeah we can get one person but why don't we get a big fish why don't we net ourselves a whopper right why don't we really go and get somebody and i'm about that life i grew up at a time when a part of the evil practice of apartheid in South Africa was stopped because of a coalition of countries coming together to apply economic pressure to the government of South Africa. And followed that right the way through my youth, up until the point where Nelson Mandela became leader of the country and a player like Chester Williams uh, became uh, not only the first black player to be capped by the spring box but an iconic one an instrumental in their world cup success wonderful stories one and all and true progression but it was predicated on the hard pressure of boycotting things of putting your money where your mouth is and people say to me south africa wasn't an economic powerhouse though i don't know about that but what i do know is we've never really tried at all they say oh you can't you're not going to out-muscle Saudi financially. You're not going to hurt China financially. So we just have to tolerate the bad things. I think that's weakling talk. I don't like it. I think you should be trying to apply pressure to these people by any means possible. We can at least try, right? Can we try? No, we're not going to try. We're going to create excuses to not try. That's what we do in esports. And so I don't understand why there's never been a walkout at a Riot Games event. I don't understand why people aren't boycotting ESL. I don't understand why entities that are rivals to ESL, Saudi-owned, China-owned businesses, I don't understand why they're not making a more vocal point of, we're not, we're not owned by the bad people. Please come and support us. Here's an event going to sponsors. I don't know why we're not aggressively creating a them and us culture in the same way we do when it's someone that said something we don't like online. I think this is a valid perspective. By the way, I don't know why some people, um, I'll make sure you some examples in a bit. Some people s said he's, he's defended Andrew Tate. I mean, I, I couldn't be clearer and not somebody I would even want to meet, frankly. But if you ask me who's done more harm to women, Andrew Tate, or the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Is this a question? I don't understand why people sort of pat themselves on the back every time we have a common W in that we have had somebody penalized in what could have been a teaching moment. 
More on that in a second. But um, instead, we, we, we take that victory dance. And then when someone says, hey, why don't we go on to the next big thing? Look, we can get these guys. They go, nah, it's not that easy. That's what aboutism that is, actually. It's like, definitely isn't what aboutism. Uh, you know, I know enough about that. As I said, I, I think people are going to be like, what's your stance on whether or not Carlos should have gone? I think what would have been appropriate was... Carlos should have apologized, absolutely. I know he seemed reticent to do it. I think he did in the end, even if it was half-hearted and too late. I think he should have been suspended. I think he could have even been suspended from operating in, say, League of Legends for a year or, you know, whatever you want to do. Once the public pressure got to the sponsors and Riot, and then once Riot, who, because of their own sins, can no longer be seen to be adjacent to anything like that that could even be by the way as a result of the hundred mil uh the hundred million dollar lawsuit settlement they might not even be able to sort of like oh is this going to blow back on us is is california going to say that's a violation of the agreement i haven't looked at the specifics of the agreement but what they've done is they've basically like made the decision at that point well we can't have them in valorant and so then they've withdrawn this slot which People were saying, the Valorant slots were 15 and 20 million pounds. It's like, got news for you. You can't sell the slots in Valorant. You don't own them. It's not like Overwatch. They're only a marketing tool. <laughs> That's all they are. So they're worth whatever you can sell the value of having a Valorant team in that league against, which varies from team to team. For a G2 team, maybe that looks like 7 mil. For a smaller organization, it looks like a mil. You know, that's the value. It's 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 a marketing, it's a promotional tool. That's all they are. You don't own shit with Riot Games. That's that's how they do it. So, I mean, suspended, sure. Chained to a desk, sure. Apology, sure. I think probably as well, you know, you could have donated a portion of his salary to a women's charity or something like that because at the end of the day, I think there's a good uh, solid juxtaposition where you can transmute bad into good and you can take things you know like what Tate says and then with the attention it gets you can raise money against that and put it towards a good cause and that kind of offsets the existence of that garbage uh in the world right so there was an opportunity there Carlos probably didn't want to be told I get it he's Carlos he does things his way uh, I wish he'd been a little less hot-headed and brash about all of this. I don't believe Carlos is a bad person. You can't tell me that. Carlos, to me, is uh, a man capable of incredible good. And it upset me that not a lot of other people came out to tell stories like about him at a time when the mob sort of needed to be quelled and there needed to be mul multiple voices in the room. You know, I suppose I'm a little bit guilty of that. I went on that podcast for two hours and we were very primarily focused on talking about, you know, it wasn't a referendum on Tate's content. I find it objectionable and, and, and offensive, just, you know, but equally, I don't like it when people get unpersoned from the internet. Another, another topic, one that's unrelated to this. But we spent a lot of time talking about the ramifications of it. And again, we got into this topic of why do we never go after the real villains? Esports was never under threat from Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate's never coming to esports. He doesn't want to be in esports. He's never going to threaten our little corner of the world with his bile and garbage. What we ended up doing in a desire to do good, one that's inherently hypocritical, we've ended up exiling someone that really, like, never, n you've never heard a woman say anything bad about Carlos you've never had any work or any esports work say anything bad about Carlos you know I can tell you when Maria was kind of on the outs at uh, League of Legends because she'd had obviously some problems and some disagreements with some people there and was essentially being bullied Carlos was super supportive to her like apropos of nothing I said to Carlos would you cheer her up and talk to her and he went yeah and he used to call her and check in on her all the time. He's a good man, you know? I'm not going to stand here and think it's a good thing. Because I'll tell you this. He'll be done with esports almost certainly. I don't think he's coming back. Just a lot of mistakes. Now, I'll add as well, just for the purposes of balance. 
yeah, he fucked up big time, in my opinion. I don't know if he probably wouldn't agree with me, but, you know, that's him. But he fucked up big time. I feel genuinely sorry for the Exet Valorant players. They had a guaranteed slam dunk job representing G2 in what will be the biggest Valorant league next year, and it was taken away for nothing they did. Carlos has to make that right. If you want to talk about atonement and everything else, Carlos has to sort of make that right somehow. I don't know if he can. Somebody has to. That feels like grotesquely unfair. But I'll add as well, I don't think a lot of people beating the drum thought about where, you know, this could end up. Because the balanced approach is Carlos fucked up. Here's a proportional punishment. Riot Games could have back-channeled to him and said, listen... You're going to have to publicly say you're not involved in the Valorant team if you want us to give the stop. There was basically, everybody dialed it up to 11 when we could have done an 8. That's all I'm saying. And we didn't do that. We chose not to. Because it's esports. And what we do, you see, by doing it this way and saying, yeah, it's Carlos, Carlos bad, Carlos fucked up, fuck, fuck him, one down, it's all his own fault, and having a good old chuckle about it, we get another few weeks where we don't have to think about what esports actually is. And I'll repeat it. It's become not even a corporate toy anymore. It was a corporate toy. It still is, but now the money that's coming into it, it's all tainted. And the people that are taking it, you can never speak about morals or values ever again. It's the type of money that taints your soul. It's like running a sweatshop. That's what we're doing. We're, we're taking very bad money. You know, and listen, I've criticized Carlos as well for shaking hands and going out, going to Gamers 8 and meeting those people. You know, but he's definitely not the only one doing that. It just seems to me that, like, I don't know. People say you only should pick the fights that you can win. But my point is we never try to have the fight with the people that just so coincidentally happen to pay everybody. Isn't that weird? Maybe I missed the mark with the piece. I rewrote that piece like three or four times. It was originally 4,000 words. There's like zero chance of getting anyone to read that. I had to cut like 800 words out. Or maybe I could have cut more. Maybe I could have changed some. But the bottom line is the responses and reactions I saw to it. It's like they people did not read the article. People absolutely 100% did not read it. They passed a few words and then they started jabbering about the shit they wanted to talk about. Putting a pin in the Carlos stuff. Had about half a dozen outs where it would have been okay. Didn't want to surrender, you know, his beliefs, his principles for good or ill. This is the price. I still think the compromise could have been made. That's how I think about it. And I don't think esports is a better place without Carlos. I think you'd be really hard pushed to find anyone in the industry that thinks that way. I don't believe anyone would say that. No one who's worked with him just seems a bit weird. You can go and check out the piece for yourself. And just for the purposes of this being a YouTube video, you can see Carlos's uh, farewell here. When you can tell me if you think this is someone who sounds contrite or whether or not this was proportionate in the end. You know, I thought about no better way to do this than with the vertical video, which I know I, I got a lot of flack for it in the past, in previous times, but this is no better way to do this than this. So I can't believe what I'm about to say now, but um, my time in G2 has come to an end, which means that um, I will be stepping down from my CEO position. Um, I, you know, I know it might be a shocker for many of you, or most of you, and, you know, trust me, this is a very hard ending to what has been otherwise a very deeply meaningful and joyful experience. You know, I've met great people along the way. Uh, my colleagues have been fantastic to me, and I am very grateful for all these years together, you know. I take full responsibility over everything that went on in the last few days. And again, trust me when I say, I just feel fucking destroyed about it. You should know that. Um, what's next for G2? I mean, I created G2 eight plus years ago <clears throat> and I bootstrapped it with what I earned as a player, invested everything into it. Not only money, but also time. And 
you know, what initially was a dream of mine just started here, eventually became a group of people with similar ambitions and culture and goals, you know, and that's something that I will always look back to and be happy about because I think we've done a good job at it. I want to thank all the fans. I want to thank all the sponsors that make possible, you know, make our livelihood possible. I want to thank all the investors that trusted me early on with their money. Um, I want to thank all the publishers that trusted me with putting team together, teams together for their games and allowing me to play in their leagues, league organizers, etc. You guys have been fantastic to me over the last 17 years and I will never forget, okay? Um, I'm very emotional about this, but I will not cry, not today. This is my this is my farewell video, so I will not fucking cry now, okay? Um, I hope you guys remember me for the good things. I hope that is my legacy, the good things. And just know that I'm very grateful for all of you, okay? I'll see you around. And remember, we're samurai, we thrive, not because we win, but because we always get back up. That's him gone. I mean, I genuinely believe that's uh, the end of him. And sure, he was the architect of his own downfall in the sense that, as I said, there's half a dozen outs, but also we just, any public figure in esports is walking an insane tightrope where everything's policed, everything's judged, uh, guilt by association uh, is uh, ramped up in a way that it isn't in a lot of other sectors, as far as I can see. And as I know, the bottom line is, uh, even if you apologize in the first instance, it doesn't matter, actually. Uh, what happens is you apologize. You still have to be fired, right? You get fired, but you apologized. And then you wait six months, however long, you try and come back and people turn around and say, oh, but he got fired from his last job for doing X, Y, and Z. Uh, so you can't hire him. And then people go, okay. And then you don't get, you know, you're not allowed to grow. You're not allowed to change. You're not allowed to be sincere. One mistake is all it takes. And a lot of people just are sick and tired of living like that, especially when, you know, where's the energy for stuff? Like this, this is, uh, again, uh, in Games Developer News, Riot Games. Uh, you know, when I'm talking about the executive branch of Riot Games, they didn't fire a single person, right? So imagine creating a culture that the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing has investigated themselves. It wasn't that, it was just a complaint. It was that they investigated it, and it was their findings. It was their lawsuit. They were obviously confident of a slam dunk, and, uh, and they've had to settle it. Right? So imagine, right, that the entire executive body that fostered a culture like this all have a job, even the ones that it was deemed the allegations were substantiated. This is Scott Gelb at Riot Games. Scott Gelb, for his role in that lawsuit, the allegations of which I'm not going to repeat again, they're all there in the article, he got suspended for two months with, uh, without pay for workplace misconduct. Two months without pay. That's the Riot Games standard of punishment. And that is a fucking, you know, slap on the wrist. And yet, where's the energy? Where's the fucking 10,000 people, like there was for Carlos, where's the 10,000 people spamming Riot Games? We are going to boycott your products until Scott Gelb is fired, until Mark Merrill resigns. Where is it? It's like with Bobby Kotick at Activision Blizzard. Right? Fair enough to the employees over there. They did a walkout. Walkouts are a day off, let's be real. They don't change anything. There's got to be sustained public pressure against these people. And it's never there. Bobby Kotick still has a job after he was caught threatening, according to a Wall Street Journal report, threatening to kill his female assistant. Bobby Kotick not only has a job, he remains hugely wealthy and hugely influential. And deemed by the board, they could have voted him off. The board kept him on, on the basis he is the right person to guide us through the handover between Activision Blizzard and Microsoft. Scott Gelb keeps his job. Mark Merrill keeps his job. Everyone else gets to keep their jobs. It's weird. I don't get it. I don't understand it. Well, I do, but I don't want to. 
I want to believe that one day people are going to like get up in arms about this shit, but they won't. Saying bad things about Riot will mean you can never work for Riot, no matter how mild, so people don't do it. All the people who are dogpiling Carlos, they're never getting a check off G2. They're never getting a check off him. Be super unlikely. And also, he's not like a capricious and petty person, like the, that the totality of the Riot uh, company is and just to underline it as well I, i've met this guy he's the guy who took over the esports division he's like the vice president or president of esports now john needham now i've had the pleasure of meeting the guy struck me as a nice guy he made a point of sitting me down and saying you know there's there's room for a clean start here and I said, well, you know, that starts with you. <laughs> you have to change. But we had a lovely drink with each other because I'm not a savage, right? We can meet. Even people that did medieval battle used to send one guy out on a horse and another guy out on a horse. And yeah, sometimes they were launching a severed head at someone or whatever. But, you know, generally there were grounds for negotiation. But, like, where, where are we at <laughs> with, with the values? This is an interview... Uh, you can't see it. That's an interview with John Needham, right? Where he says, he was asked, and the questions were, were pretty good. Uh, he was asked the question, I want to pivot to a sensitive topic. The esports industry in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia in particular. I understand the argument that there are a lot of fans in the region who care about esports and that companies in the industry want to bring esports and entertainment to them. But at the same time, there are dramatic human rights concerns around some of the regressive governments in place there. I'm curious about how Riot is thinking about those challenges and whether you have any hard lines around participation in certain countries. Needham said, we are an international company, the biggest international gaming company I've been a part of. We serve players in dramatically different cultures all around the world and we have a philosophy around we're going to go and we're going to serve our players where they are in their region. That carries through in esports. For our fans in the Middle East, we are supporting them with esports there within the Middle East and we try to be careful in not mixing the cultures too much in ways that could upset our fan base. We love our Middle Eastern players. We're going to have a great esports scene in the Middle East. We'll just see how that grows and develops and whether that can be part of a bigger international ecosystem. What a cowardly and pathetic answer. Why do the executives, and again, it's a rhetorical question, why do they lack the courage to say human rights violations are wrong? We absolutely do not support them. And we are making it clear we will not serve our products to any entity that engages in these. What's the pro like? Oh, that's right. You lose hundreds of millions of dollars. Okay, my bad. They don't have any values, guys. They're not going to get values until they are punished. And I'm not talking about a Reddit thread. I'm talking about boycotts. I'm talking about people refusing to work for them. I'm talking about broadcasts being hijacked by broadcast talent to put out messages of solidarity. Some people have to show some backbone on this or nothing's going to change. And the only thing that might change is, instead of a paycheck, you're getting a pink slip and you're getting fucking shit canned. You're getting your P45, whatever the fuck. But someone's got to try. I've been trying. Is anyone else going to? Or are we just going to take down Carlos and the next Carlos and the Carlos after that and allow Riot to fucking do their thing? Allow ESL, who can't even run a fucking CSGO event properly in 2022. Are we going to allow them to just fucking sell out to Saudi to cynically get sponsors for a women's league before they sell to Saudi? Are we just going to pretend that's all right? Are we going to stand there and go, yeah, GG for all, when we know that just this month a Saudi Arabian woman was put in jail for 34 years for tweets criticizing the Saudi state? Are we all all right with that? I'm not. I'm not all right with that. And I'm never going to accept the excuse, oh, well, it, it's happened in Formula One, it's happened in golf, it's happened in boxing. It's our turn. Never has to be your turn to be evil. <laughs> like, just doesn't have to. Anyway, I wrote the article. I made the point that I made. Uh, it went over brilliantly, as you can imagine. On the CSGO subreddit, it was, like, largely accepted as, like, a decent article. It made it to the Valorant subreddit, and that was very weird. I, I thought, oh, we've turned a corner with Valorant. But no, they're, they're Zuma kids that just 
are delusional, uh, same as it was at the start of League of Legends. You know, Riot Games always seem to do a good job of attracting a particular type of fan. You know, we had not a single negative comment on the Yay podcast. Everyone was like, oh, wow, it's a really good interview, really good content. Here's an opinion piece. Oh, this is biased. It's a fucking opinion. We're back here. It, I feel like Dr. Manhattan. It is 2012. I am explaining to a Zoomer what an, what an opinion piece is. The moderators already begin to ban me. It is 2016. I'm writing about CSGO gambling. People tell me I am biased. It is 2022. Valorant has been released. They are saying my opinion pieces are biased. I am tired of being wrapped in the tangle of their idiocy. But anyway, very different reaction to the CSGO subreddit over, over, over here. Uh, including there's this bizarre theory that I p use a paid service to brigade my articles. Hold that thought. Remember, it is 59% upvoted. <laughs> right? We'll, but yeah, we'll come to that. They receive an intriguing amount of awards. This is the guy, by the way. So this guy said, and he wasn't in the yay thread, and he said, incoming 150 awards and 1,000 plus upvotes in an hour for completely normal engagement on a Reddit post. And then he made another thread, another post, right, where he said, I'm going to count the awards. Here, awards tracker. He made this immediately afterwards. One to three, 50 awards. What I don't understand is why does this moron think if, it, if I was paying for the engagement, why would it be awards? Awards don't do anything to the Reddit algorithm. Upvotes do. It wouldn't be a 59% if anyone was paying for it. And by the way, spoiler, it's almost certainly him doing this. Because he did it on the Sean Gares one. He did the exact same posts on the Sean Gares one. But he didn't go to the yay thread. Probably because he didn't realise it was my content. And he's doing this to, uh, for whatever reason. To try and fucking discredit my work. But again, I don't give a fuck how many awards... Uh, 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 something gets on Reddit. What am I? A fucking incel. I don't care. Like, who gives a fuck? Who cares about that? Oh, it's got 50 awards. What does that do? Like, what? How, does that give me 50, Does that give me 50 more people see it? Does that give me fucking, you know, 50 more clicks? No. Does it mean it stays on the front page for 50 more hours? No. It would be of absolutely zero value to me. But to Reddit plebs, they see that and they go, Oh, look, yeah, yeah. It must be good if people are rewarding it. It's no great mystery. Basically, I wrote about a popular esports org, a popular figure, a popular topic in a popular game. And people saw it and, without wading into the thread, gave an award for it based on a few key. Same thing happened with Sean Cares and DDK, popular people, you know. But anyway, so that was just stupid. And there's just like. About two dozen, three dozen comments like this. He's brigading the sub. He was banned for brigading from League of Legends. Yeah, definitely was. I used to link to people's comments and say, look what this moron is saying. And that was considered vote brigading. Even though it's not even against Reddit TOS. Just against League, you know, mentally ill League of Legends moderators TOS. That they make up in their mind. This comment is a banger. This is deeply and wildly embarrassing. Uh, Carlos probably doesn't really know anything about Tate. And it's actually good that G2 is edgy. Doesn't even say that. It says Carlos cannot be... And my assumption is Carlos doesn't know everything Tate has said. And that they just met an awards party. And I'd be willing to offer the benefit of the doubt there. That's what it says. Just lies. But it is the most boneheaded argument. So the, the, the argument that isn't even in the article it is the most boneheaded argument of all time. And then even if it were true... That Carlos had no idea what Tate's track record is. That wouldn't exonerate him. It just makes his full throat defense look that much more uninformed and egotistical. So not knowing who the person is <laughs> wouldn't exonerate him, apparently. For having a fucking take you know, having a video taken with them. The how dare riot have issues with internal sexism and yet castigate others for sexism stance is also unbelievably confused. Again, the article doesn't say that. The article says, if you would condemn Carlos, but work with Riot, you are a hypocrite. You are. This is inarguable. Then, Riot is an enormous institution, like many institu institutions, has a history of misogyny that's been reflected in both individual action and corporate culture. The exposés and lawsuits were part of an attempt to correct that culture. Them having to be sued was good, actually. 
This is how whipped Riot Games fans are. Many of the people who work at Riot are attempting to rehabilitate the institution, including, I suppose, the ones who got to keep their jobs, right? And so that it's fair, with two months unpaid leave, so that it's a fair and respectful workplace for people of all genders. Refusing to platform violent misogyny is not hypocritical. It's fully consistent with that process of reform. No one even said Riot were platforming misogyny. How do guys like this think institutional change change works? By actually making changes, <laughs> which Riot didn't. Because Riot has had issues with internal sexism, they're, not op they're now obligated to be enthusiastically sexist in public. What's the end game there? Uh, they were never enthusiastically sexist in public. They were very enthusiastically sexist in private, my friend. So, uh, the, probably the dumbest comment, and yet, because it's negative... And it's just up, there you go, it's just upvoted. That's the top comment. Straw man arguments about things I never said. Because it has to be bad, right? Like, is, is he, what's he doing? Is he defending Carlos? Article doesn't defend Carlos. Says punishment would be appropriate. An apology would have been appropriate. You know, just nonsense. I decided to give this article a chance in spite of it being Richard Lewis. And yikes. The argument of he stood next to a bad man who expressed misogynistic views and called him a friend without endorsing his views really peeves me. It's really underplaying how bad Tate is. Now, the article says, second paragraph, which again, these morons don't read the articles. It says, what this article will not be is a referendum on Tate. Here is a link to a two-hour podcast where I summarize and condemn Andrew Tate. We'll come back to Reddit in a moment. Can you imagine how fucking wild it is that after the episode of Four Horsemen that I did, which, by the way, we did do it. It was real. You can do a link. Like, I got attacked by Tate Cells for days after that. People messaging me saying, you know, you're just jealous Andrew Tate. I can't... <laughs> if it was a choice between non-existence and being Andrew Tate, I'd, I'd, I'd murk myself. <laughs> like, it's, it, I can say that hand on heart. He doesn't seem to have a cohesive worldview. He just doesn't... Is he even a billionaire? Looks to me like one of those guys who just has a little bit of money, but fakes having more because they're running a fucking Ponzi scheme. Oh, sorry, a multi-level marketing scheme. They're dime a dozen, really. You're not seeing all these influencers. Like, he might have done a little bit of kickboxing, but, you know, wicked. That was actually the worst part. The thing that people attacked me for the most was saying he was a mediocre kickboxer. He's a four-time world champion, said the Tate Cells, repeating what? you know andrew tate says about himself in iska <laughs> he's never touched gloves with the best kickboxers in the world ever if i made a boxing promotion with me and my mates my discord right i take everyone on my discord and we have a boxing promotion right and i'm just smashing mods left right and center because you know they can barely get out the chair and i'm like ah, have that your mods have it all right and then i declare myself a boxing world champion I'm not a world champion, am I? I mean, the promotion says I am, but I'm not, am I? First time I step in a ring with a real boxer, I'm going to get my head stoved in. What a fucking, what a joke. Like, see, you can go look this up. I mean, maybe people don't know enough about combat sports that they just think all promotions are equal. So I was getting attacked for that. I will kick your head in. I will show you medio mediocre kickboxing when I kick your head off your shoulders, you fat boomer. You know, it's like, what the fuck is this? I spent days getting attacked by Tate cells, right? And then, I write this article, which links to the repudiation of Andrew Tate, <laughs> and just simply says, yeah, could we, there are worse people, there are worse entities in the world than the Tate brothers, right? And for that, now I'm getting attacked by the supposed good guys. Yeah, he's, what about him? He's defending them. Like, fuck, can we just find a middle ground? Is, this, is, is it possible? Anyway, it really uh, underplays how bad Tate is. Just listen to his whole statement on why he moved to Romania. Yep, brought that up on the podcast. Uh, misogyny is a gentle way to describe it. B, if you don't know a person well enough to know their views on women that they publicly broadcast constantly, they are not your friend and you shouldn't be defending them. Exactly what I said <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> Carlos didn't take any I didn't know and I'll step back. He got rather aggressive. Yeah, it's tiresome being attacked 24-7 as he is. He definitely handled it badly, but the internet treats people like garbage. Then it goes, obviously there are absolutely other issues on that need to be addressed, but Carlos shouldn't be punished because others need to be punished too. It was a horrible take. The article said three times. <laughs> three. 
it was appropriate Carlos received some sort of punishment because he fucked up. A really embarrassing article, surprised it was published. I never had love for Richard Lewis, but I didn't think he was prone to making such silly arguments. The arguments are silly, apparently. This article is complete garbage and just another attempt to hold anyone but the individual responsible for their own actions. Riot has done some bad shit, right? The funny thing is, I get, for, for people accusing the article of whataboutism or, and saying it was apolo a, an, a, an apology for Carlos's bad behaviour, all wanted to literally just jump on and fucking dick ride Riot till the end of time. Riot has done some bad shit. Imagine summarising it like that. Riot has done some bad shit. I haven't heard a quote that understated since some people did some things. Riot has done some bad shit, and this is part of their realignment, which is incredibly important to the people that work for them. Are they supposed to just let everything fly now? No. Nonsensical logic being applied here. Not surprising from a Richard Lewis article, though. Just basically react your way through the news, because it's great clickbait. And again, apparently... Writing a polemic about a topical issue is clickbait now. There's someone accusing me of making alts to award my own posts. Uh, so now I have 50 alts or whatever awards it got. Uh, I would understand if Richard Lewis was unbiased and objective. <laughs> it's the old opinion piece argument again. But Riot, uh, Richard Lewis is literally the biggest Riot Games hater in the scene. I ask, why are you not? Why am I obliged to like Riot Games in any way, shape, or form. What have they done to justify me liking them? What have they done exactly? They've come into esports. They've trampled on everything they've touched. They've fucking lied to people I know. They've worked with companies and snatched away things they promised to them. They have allowed team owners to treat players like garbage. They've turned a blind eye to some of the most heinous abuses I've ever seen in esports at all, despite being notified about it. They've perpetrated some of the most heinous abuses in esports. They've done it all while lying to the community and making tens of millions. They're owned by Tencent, a company that does business with the Chinese government. They've covered up fucking data protection leak. Oh, what do you want? Like, how, Do I have to do it again? Do I have to go over it again? Do I, I'm going to get a sign, and it's going to be all of Riot's wrongdoing since they came into existence, and I'm just going to hold it up. Why do I have to like Riot Games? Why does anyone like Riot Games? Why, why would you? Why would you? Why would you like them? But irrespective of that, if for the purposes of an opinion piece, I express my opinion, and my opinion just so happens to be, here's why I dislike Riot Games. It's an opinion piece. <laughs> for the millionth fucking time. If, the, if you Zoomers can just learn one fucking thing, one thing, just take, if you are capable of retaining one piece of information in your fucking addled TikTok destroyed minds, please just understand an opinion piece is always biased towards the opinion of the author, otherwise it cannot serve its primary function. That, take it, hold it, nurture it. You will now be able to read opinion pieces and enjoy them, enjoy them for what they are. A polemic building, explaining the opinion of the author. A whole new world has been opened to you, it's amazing. You're not just consuming news, you're getting depth and context and a window into the mind of the person that writes the opinion piece. It has value. Fuck me. Richard Lewis has always been embarrassing writing anything other than straight news. Again, this person, nine years, been holding on to the League of Legends drama for nine years. It's always been embarrassing writing anything other than straight news. Trying to act like Carlos didn't know about Tate's fucking pathetic, didn't say that. Sad that people like this are still such a big part of the scene. Oh, just come and kill me. Like, get what are you going to do? Like, when, when is someone going to have me assassinated? <laughs> like, hurry the fuck up. Why is he still part of the scene? Because it's, it's not a ticket. It's not a turnstile, you mad cunt. It's not like one in, one out. Right? It's not a bar. It doesn't close. For fuck's sake. If you want me out the scene, there's only one way. <laughs> so fucking do it. <laughs> Hurry the fuck up. None of you will. You fantasize about it.
but you won't fucking do shit. You never do. This th this is the mods confirming it wasn't in any way manipulated like they did it the last time because it's that guy who counts the awards that's doing the awards almost certainly. Holy fucking shit, this article is weird. First, the whataboutism is grossly, grossly overstated and disgusting. Right? Now remember, there's a paragraph in the article explaining how whataboutism is like the, the word literally. It's sort of becoming like just a complete bastardization of what it is. Because when you say, here's two things that are the same. Why do you hate one but not the other? That's not what aboutism, right? <laughs> what aboutism is somebody says, well, you didn't pay your taxes, and you go, yeah, but what about you? You had an affair, right? That's what aboutism, what I just did there, right? That's what aboutism. What aboutism isn't these two things are the same, but what, you're only angry about one. Everyone's actually doing what aboutism when they say, what aboutism? First, the what about ism is grossly, grossly overstated and disgusting. Yeah, there are horrors and bad shit in the world. No, we can't fix everything instantly. Child labour and shit exists. But that doesn't mean what Carlos did wasn't bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Child labour exists. But. <laughs> That's like one of them fucking Discord memes with the doom music. Bow, 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 bow. Are you, is this real? The whole thing is just some weird way of hand-waving what Carlos did, instead of noting how he doubled down over and over, which ultimately is what fucked him up to start with. You're right, if only the article had mentioned that he doubled down, and let me just read the article. Uh, here's a line, two lines from the article. Carlos fucked up spectacularly, of that there can be no doubt. Not only did he seemingly proudly associate the Tates with his brand, he then referred to them as friends and doubled down on him being allowed to party with whoever he wants, regardless of public perceptions. You're right, my weird article left out the important detail of him doubling down when it specifically said that he doubled down. You've done it again, Reddit. You didn't read the article. You saw three or four words, and then you said what the voices in your head told you to. Head meltosis in action. If this is a Richard Lewis article, never read my work before by the sounds of it, then count me fucking out. Mate, you didn't even read it anyway, you daft cunt, did you? So you are certainly counted out. <laughs> this guy likes to equate everything on some here's all evil in the world versus some bad shit this one guy did. And somehow the latter can never be held accountable because a non-zero amount of evil exists. The actual fuck? I'm sorry, but this whataboutism is the most obnoxious thing ever. Again, didn't read the article. Same with sideshows yesterday going, what about for issues completely unrelated to the topic at hand is not a logical argument. Riot saw someone as a brand risk, did not want to work with him, and he got pushed out as CEO because he cost his company millions of dollars. This is not defending Riot. Riot sucks ass. That's just the situation. Bringing up the issues in China, which we all know, and Sideshow bringing up Sinatra, does not affect the Carlos situation at all. No one says it does. It's really mad, isn't it? Like, you're in this world where people can't grasp what the point is. The point is, why do we not have the energy to deal with all of it? Why do we only select the problem that drifts across our timeline? And never the one that might cost us something? Like, ooh, you know, like, have some stakes, you know? Then a mod removed the article because it was a repost because Reddit mods, like, just can't even follow simple rules. <laughs> and generally, the Valorant sub's one of the better ones. This mod um, is an idiot. It, then they removed the article uh, saying because it, it was a repost, it couldn't have been a repost physically because of the concept of linear time, which always baffles people on the internet. They removed it. And then it had to get reposted later with the mods having to put a filter on it to stop all the abuse that it was getting for being a repost. So, you know, the Valorant scene and opinion pieces. Obviously, still got some work to be done there. Uh, then Twitter, obviously. Twitter's a place. Had some interesting interactions on Twitter. And from now on, this is going to be the question I am going to quote tweet at anyone that ever 
does this fucking villain of the day bullshit and let's riot games in Saudi Arabia, ESL, all these companies, Activision Blizzard, let's them off the hook. New approach, right? This is a guy called Malik Shelp, I don't know him. I'm guessing he's been in esports for about five minutes. He's a talent coordinator for the guard, uh, who obviously were a very good Valorant team. Um, sadly, uh, didn't get in to the league despite their talent i guess just not a big enough brand it wasn't a money issue i think they're owned by the cronkies but still haven't had that uh, haven't had that growth yet so he said this is an extremely detailed article it is still clickbait now again i might just do a video on terms idiots misuse uh, there's so many of them these days on the internet clickbait is when and it, it has always meant this clickbait isn't Here's a title that makes you want to click the article. Clickbait, uh, the emphasis is on the bait in the idea of a bait and switch. For example, clickbait is, you will never believe this one trick will make your erections stronger. Or this will add, you'll never believe this one simple act will make your penis 10 inches bigger. Or use this product to make your hair grow back you know it's always for topics that g generally go to like fucking anxiety all the stuff spam emails would be about stuff that people are like secretly desperately like worried about or whatever and then what happens is you click on the article and then it's like 10 years ago a doctor in mumbai came up with a secret formula and big pharma tried to shut him down it gives you then you go what well, well, but I just want to know how how to make my penis bigger or make my hair come back or whatever. And then you click, then, oh, f go here. And then you click on it again. And then it's another page. And then it's another page. And then it's another page. And it turns out you're in a slideshow. And you never get to the end of it. And it's all garbage even when you do. Like the one about the live forever if you just put two magnetic wristbands on. that I'm sure you've seen if you're as old as I am or even close to it. The, the point is it baits you into just clicking and clicking and clicking pages with grotesque offensive ads all over to essentially maximize the digital revenue they get from you clicking on it. Or it's stupid stuff, more like a listicle or whatever, like... 10 childhood stars who've aged terribly and then it'll have a picture of like macaulay culkin and then like someone who isn't macaulay culkin who's like had their face burnt off in a fire or whatever and you go what the fuck and you click on that and then it's just like here's a kid picture here's an adult picture of 10 relatively normal film stars that's clickbait these are examples of clickbait what is never clickbait and what will never be clickbait is a fucking 3,000 word polemic opinion piece about, you know, just because it's about a topical issue. No one, that is not clickbait. Certainly not. How would it be? Who's got the attention span, as we've just established, to read? Who, what, I couldn't, I could never, never, it would never be clickbait. I could have done a clickbait article. 10 things Carlos did wrong. I could have done a listicle on it. This one simple thing will cost you your esports org. I could have done that. That would have been clickbait. This was not clickbait. This took me days to write. You fucking cunt. Anyway, while this is an extremely detailed article, it is still clickbait apologist writing. He's a CEO and he made the mistake of associating himself with the wrong person and he paid for it. Just because other villains don't get cancelled doesn't mean Carlos wasn't in the wrong. Esports needs more accountability through and through. By the way, who's done more for accountability in esports than me? But my bad, my clickbait apology. -er. There are too many gaps in the checks and balances and orgs developers, creative agencies, and talent groups. If you make your career being in the limelight, be prepared for what may come when you make a mistake. I pointed out he didn't even accurately summarize the article, nor did he use the term clickbait uh, accurately. Uh, people were telling him to read the article. He called me buddy. He did the whole, I'm not your buddy guy. I'm not your friend buddy. He did that on me. He alpha, tried to alpha me like that. And then I asked him a question. Because he accused me of blame switching. And this is the new approach to all of these people. Because you watch how quickly they shut up. So he's got lots to say about Carlos, right? So I said, how do you feel about accountability at Riot Games? Should the executives that foster the sexist culture worthy of a $100 million uh, lawsuit settlement still have their jobs? And he said, I'm not saying they aren't in the wrong. They're just in the wrong on that. It's not heinous or evil or any of that stuff. They're just in the wrong. Uh, they should be thrown out just like Bobby K. Didn't even type his name. 
Uh, what I'm saying is we shouldn't be blame switching. He got what he deserved for doubling down on publicly engaging with a controversial figure. Court of public opinion is everything. No one is blame switching. I'm asking you a direct question. Should the right executives that fostered that culture be fired? Yeah, but what is that? What is why does that have anything to do with him being held accountable for his actions? The other villains will see the writing on the wall as the community calls for punishment of those who don't reflect inclusive values. So I asked, as someone who works in esports, remember he works for the guard, right? The guard have a relationship with Riot. They're going to be playing in their Ascension League, presumably, next year and looking to get into the big leagues, right? And they've had a long standing relationship with Riot Games, right? As someone who works in esports, how will you be holding the right games executives you believe should be fired accountable? No answer. And he's been tweeting daily, hourly since. No fucking answer. That's the new question from now on. Anyone who talks about accountability, two questions. Should the people at Riot Games be held accountable for their actions? And if so, how will you be holding them accountable? They'll be silent every time. And that right there, that demonstrates the point better than anything I could have written. Better than 3,000 plus words. Actually, it's right there. That's all you need to know. Not a reply. The moral cowardice. The refusal to reply to that. That's it. That's the new approach. Anyone that pipes up about anything related to these topics, what are you doing about this? Can't help but notice you worked with ESL last week. Bam, bam, bam. All quote tweeted all the fucking time. Enough's enough. So I'm glad. I want to thank Mr. Shelp for giving me that. Just a weird, weird reaction to the piece. And I didn't think it was that bad or that objectionable. I mean, also, <laughs> hang on. We can't go without this. Uh, it's my fault. I have to just not reply on Twitter. I was getting hammered in my DMs as well. But I have to stick to it. I mustn't reply. You just got to move on and not reply. Because these people just aren't real. Like, like it, it sounds arrogant or conceited but they're not fully developed yet they're not in the same place i am that's all there is to it so here we go right? i saw this guy this has to be one of the most disgusting articles i've ever had the displeasure to read this is the same rhetoric as conservative inflammatory media shifting the blame of everything that happened on the people that criticized him criticism isn't cancel culture now obviously right it didn't use the phrase cancel culture one and then you see you see the bio an amaranth viewer a pokemon subscriber and valkyrie enjoyer right and i was like oh i missed that <laughs> i missed i missed the significant red flags and trust me if you go and look it's all like unironic the queen returns and it's like poker made streaming and he's the queen the queen i'm like oh no i didn't know i didn't know that was a real thing i didn't know that i thought that was a joke i thought that was like an ironic thing because obviously we do that on the on the discord so i have to just accept that it is it is pointless to even argue with people like that so anyway yeah strange reaction to the article i don't think it was that objectionable i don't think like based on the fact that yes two-thirds roughly i would say did agree with it i don't think it, it's like this like controversial opinion that's like outside of the purview of like normal thought i think exile w was a bit too far i think we we have to set our sights a little bit bigger if you want to fix the industry does anyone even want to fix the industry anymore i don't know uh, all I know is that, like, Carlos built something. You know, he really did. He built something special. He built something that brought, like, a lot of joy to a lot of people's lives. If you looked at some of the players that were talking about how, you know, they're millionaires now, thanks to G2. And, uh, you know, I can't remember which League of Legends player it was, but they said they, like, literally started out with a job, like, picking up lolly sticks at a holiday resort, you know, for pennies an hour. And now they're a millionaire and it perks, that was it. And, you know, you have to consider that a net good, don't you? Just strange and just tiresome that, again, every time there's like... Listen, uh, so I'll end this bit here, right? One of the things I always do is, when there is a discussion, when there is a debate, very quickly, when there's like a happening, it narrows down to two sides and then one side prevails... And then the people who are in the middle waiting to see which side would prevail because they don't really care. 
They all go to that side, and then that side becomes monolith, and the losing side becomes dwarfed. And at that point, on, in an internet discussion, what you're supposed to do, if you're on the losing side, is shut up, go away, delete your account. Otherwise, you will be hounded. Otherwise, people will dox you. People will contact your employees. You are on the wrong side. The end. You are wrong. It's immutable. Doesn't matter if it actually turns out new information comes to light. Doesn't matter. You are in that moment wrong. And you are meant to go away and shut up. It's not a debate. And this is the illusion of it all. Because here's the thing. There's not even two sides. It's a multifaceted, nuanced occurrence with different viewpoints and additional information you know you might like one facet of it hate another we create these very dogmatic you know ways to interface with each other you know one of the things i always try and do when i write these articles is i look at which part of the discussion is being underserved i try and put myself into a rhetorical mindset if I genuinely believe it, it doesn't matter if I believe the other stuff, but I'll look at the underserved component of a discussion, get into a rhetorical mindset where I can think I can deliver a solid argument for it. And I put it out there. It's not that that's all I believe. It's not that it's just apology or, or it's a constant sustained attack against Riot Games. It's that no one else was saying this. No one else was saying this. A few people, a handful of people, but not loudly enough and not in a formalized fashion. And I do that for everything. I just finished an article today. I'm not particularly happy with it. And it's going to go down like a fart in a jacuzzi because I've been interviewing like Russian esports workers that have been put in bad positions working for organizations in the region, particularly like Ukrainian ones. And the Russian workers are you know sort of being mistreated they're having their money held back from them they're being bullied they're being abused they're getting death threats and they're like i don't support the war i don't support putin and i'll tell you i'm gonna put this one out and it's gonna be the same shit you know people are gonna say i'm a putin apologist but you have to platform those other voices you have to platform those other ideas like when i started writing that article the draft hadn't even began in russia at that time it's took me ages this one i'm not even happy with the finished result but it just has to get done so i can get on to the next thing life do be like that sometimes are we now going to dial down how we've turned the russian people like are the conscientious objectors that don't want to get drafted into the war are they okay are they good guys because i'll tell you there's a number of bolt well there's like three Baltic countries and like Poland won't let them in. So is that fair? People who don't want to fight for the Russian state. I'm hoping that with recent statements made by the UK government and the US government saying we will bring in Russian people who don't want to fight for Putin. It's like, oh yeah, they were people the whole time. They were people the whole time, guys. It's fucking crazy. So anyway, that'll be a fun day because, you know, uh, well, actually, you know what? It probably is, is... I imagine the Tate cells probably have more energy now after 150 days or 160 or 170 or wherever we're up to now than the right side of history enjoyers. I don't even know where we're at right now. But it's just uh, like every... Uh, can we just... Is it possible to express an opinion without some, like, motivated group of people who want to, like... You know, if, please, like... <laughs> He's the man to do the damage. Oh! 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 Oh!